Can we actually code a wavetable synthesizer in the Rust programming language? Let's find out! Hi everyone, my name is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and if you're new to this channel, I teach you how to process sound using self-written software. With that being said, today we are going to implement a wavetable synthesizer in the Rust programming language. If you don't know what wavetable synthesis is, be sure to check out my video on that topic. If you're interested in wavetable synthesis implementation in Python or the Juice C++ framework, I have also got videos on that. So, what is Rust actually? Rust is a general purpose programming language designed for high performance and high reliability computing. Its syntax is similar to C++, so it's easy to learn, and thanks to its optimality, it has been gaining more and more popularity in the recent years, especially in the domains of audio and embedded systems. Actually, it was voted the most loved language on Stack Overflow for six consecutive years as of 2021. If you're brand new to Rust, don't worry, so was I. I will take you through the step-by-step -step process of creating a Rust application. So, by the end of this video, you will not only be able to code wavetable synthesis algorithm, but you'll also be able to write any other type of Rust projects. So the benefits of this video are threefold. Learning wavetable synthesis, learning the basics of Rust, and generating a cool sound, which means five seconds of the sine wave form at 440 Hertz. For this video, you will need an IDE. I am using Visual Studio Code and the Rust programming language installed. If you want to install Rust, go to rust-lang.org slash tools slash install and follow the instructions from there. So let's get started. To initialize a Rust project, we need to go to the desired directory and type cargo init. As you can see, cargo, which is Rust's build system and package manager, has created all the necessary files for us. The folder src contains the file main.rs, and inside we have our main function, which contains the canonical hello world printing function. Now, if I type in cargo run, it will compile this whole project to a binary and run this function. And we got hello world printed in the console window. First question we want to ask ourselves is how to output sound using Rust. For this purpose, we'll use a Rust library called rod.io. To attach this library as a dependency, we must go to crates.io, here search for the desired library, and when we find it, we copy its name and version, and we put it into our, our cargo.toml file, under dependencies. If I now type in cargo run, cargo will automatically download and install this library. To use the wavetable synthesis algorithm, one needs to generate the wavetable first. And as a quick reminder, a wavetable is an array in memory which stores one period of the waveform that we want to generate with our wavetable oscillators. So let me define the size of our wavetable. Variables in Rust are declared using the let keyword, and the type of these variables is automatically deduced based on the right-hand side literal and also the usage of this variable in code. So initially, our variable is a i32 type, so a 32-bit integer, but later on you will see that it is changed to u size, so unsigned size type, which is platform dependent. To store our wavetable, we'll use a vector, a vec type. It is a flexible array type that allows us to store arrays of variable size in memory. Sounds a lot like C++ STD vector, right? Okay, so to define it, I write let. Now I write mute, so our variable is mutable, right, 
wavetable and then its type which is a vector of 32-bit floating point numbers then the assign and then vec and with capacity function and with capacity will allocate memory according to the type of the stored elements and their declared number by its own with capacity is a normal function so unlike in c++ where you would have a dedicated constructor in rust we construct objects using normal functions and here we need to specify that our wavetable is mutable because all variables declared in Rust are immutable by default. And we, of course, want to fill our wavetable with values, so it needs to be mutable. To fill our wavetable with values of one sign period, we'll use a for loop. So I write for n in 0 to wavetable size, which is a range from 0 to wavetable size minus 1, we will have wavetable push brackets brackets dot sign. And the first brackets here are for the argument of the sign function. It will be as if sign's argument was an object on which we invoke the sign function. As an argument of sign, we'll have two times pi. which is readily available in Rust, times n as float32 divided by wavetable size, also as float32. And these costs are important. Okay, so what does this function do? It fills our wavetable with values of one sign period because our argument of the sign is increased linearly from 0 to 2 pi. We now want to create a wavetable oscillator. And a wavetable oscillator is an object that iterates over the wavetable with a speed which is specified by the sampling rate and the frequency we want to generate. To have a class in the Rust programming language, we'll use the struct keyword, then the name of the class, and then the list of fields of this class as name type pairs. So we have a sample rate, which is an unsigned 32-bit integer. Then we have the wave table, which is a vector. And then we have the index and the index increment, which are both 32-bit floating point types. To implement the methods of our class, we need to write an implementation of it. An implementation in Rust is specified by the imp keyword. And here we can write all the functions that we want our wavetable oscillator to have. So we will begin with a constructing function to which we'll pass the sampling rate and the wavetable. So I write fn new which is a convention in Rust for object creating functions. Then I have arguments with their types. Then I have the returned type. And here I create our objects by specifying the values of its fields. So we pass in the arguments as the first two fields of the wavetable oscillator and initialize index and index increment with zeros. We could have put this code into the main function, but I wanted to show you a cleaner way to do it. To set the frequency of the oscillator, we need to write the set frequency function. So again, I write fn set frequency, 
and the arguments to this function are the self and the frequency. And the self is the instance of an object on which we'll invoke our method on, and it is a keyword in Rust. This ampersand here denotes borrowing of ownership. In Rust, every value has just one owner. So it is clear when to free some part of memory, exactly when its owner goes out of scope. And of course, our self must be mutable. I have discussed this function broadly in the wavetable synthesis theory, Python and C++ videos. So let me just quickly write them here. To generate sound from our wavetable oscillator, we need get sample and linear interpolation lerp methods. After writing the wavetable oscillator class, we can construct it in the main function and set its frequency to 440 Hertz. The last thing to cover is the sound playback using the rod.io library. And from the documentation of this library, we know that we need to import the duration, output stream and source. Now we need to create a stream and a stream handle. And we need to pass our samples to the stream handle and call play raw to have them played out at the output. Finally, we let our main thread to wait for five seconds because that's the time we want our oscillator to play. To successfully output samples using the rod.io library, we need our wavetable oscillator to implement the iterator and source traits. Traits in Rust are something like purely virtual classes in C++ or interfaces in Java. The iterator simply returns an object upon each call to the next function. To implement a trait in Rust, we write again impul iterator for our wavetable oscillator and here we need to define the type that is the element that we will return upon each call to next and we also need to implement the next function As you can see, the iterator returns an optional value, and we know that our oscillator always will produce a sample, so we can wrap it 
into sum, which means that we have an actual value there. And sum stands in opposition to none, so no value. Note how elegantly interfaces may be implemented by particular types separated from the main implementation. Now the source trait tells the rot.io library which properties our playback has. So again, we need four functions here. Our oscillator is monophonic, so it only has one channel of audio. We pass the sample rate upon the construction of the wavetable oscillator. The current frame length and total duration return none, which means that our output will be infinitely long. Remember that we cut our audio short to 5 seconds by terminating the main thread. Now we're ready to play our sign. Let's invoke cargo run again. Have you heard 5 seconds of a sine waveform at 440Hz? Great! You just learned how to implement wavetable synthesis in the Rust programming language. In summary, in this video you have learned wavetable synthesis and the basics of Rust. You may now continue to create more complex projects with Rust. How do you like the language? Do you find it easy or elegant to write in? Please let me know in the comments below. In the description I have put the link to the full source code on GitHub as well as to a detailed article commenting the code on dwolfsound.com. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up and if you want to become an audio programming pro, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Big shout out to Auto Acoustics Lab for letting me record this video in their offices. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.